In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you how you can zoom in on parts of an image to highlight or teach something by having something pop up. It could be historical where you have a battle, you want to zoom in on a certain place and show this happened at this location at this point in time. It could be more contemporary. We're going to use an example of highlighting in on a current map to show houses that are for sale. Please look at the following example, and then we'll show you how to do this. The first step in the process is to have my image. It can be a picture, photograph, whatever. I'm going to use this generic map and drag it and drop it on track number one. Then we'll just stretch out the duration of it. Now my map happens to be a proportion that I don't want to use. I want a 16 by 9 to fill the screen. So I'll click the crop tool above the timeline. And then I'll choose from original to 16 by 9. And so I'll need to manually decide what part of the image I want to use. Let's use the upper part and we'll just take the corners and move in until we have something close to what we need and click on OK in the lower right corner. So there's my image. What I want to do is zoom in on the image. So now I need to do some keyframing. So with the image highlighted I'm going to click on Edit and I'm going to click on the image part and I want to go on, on Advanced to do this. So I'm going to click on Advanced. And we have to decide. We're going to start looking at the image. I'm going to use a lot of keyframes by using the time code. I find that helpful. I'll click on the time code for seconds. Type 3 and press Enter. And then I'm going to right click and add a timeline marker. So I could give it a name. I'm not going to do that in this case. I'm going to click on OK. So we move in this far and then I'm going to set two keyframes. So right now it's going to be full screen. Then I'm going to go in say two seconds more which will hit me at five. Press enter. Add a timeline marker. And this is where I'm going to zoom into my first property. So I'm going to type in first property. And click OK. So I'm going to be on that property, let's say for five seconds. That gives me 10. I'm going to pre press right click and add a timeline marker. And here we're going to say end first property. Okay, so now I have my timeline markers. I need to make sure I keep adding a position and scale keyframe at each of them. Okay, then we're going to back out. So over here I'm at 10 seconds, so I'm going to go to 12, press enter, hit two keyframes again, and this is the time where I will zoom back. So I have a timeline marker here I need to set, right click, add marker, I'll put zoom back, zoom full screen. And we'll save full screen for say two seconds, I'll hit 14 and right click a timeline marker. I don't think I want to give that a name. You see the process here. All right, so I'm back to full screen and then we need to zoom in again to another location. We'll go to 16 seconds. Right click, I do a timeline marker and I'll put in second property and click on OK and I need these two and we're going to stay there for five so we're going to make this 21 and I'll do a timeline marker here and zoom out back out soon and just click OK and we'll take two seconds to zoom out so that'd be 23 
and right click okay zoomed out and we set the timeline markers click OK and these values okay now what I need to do is at the timeline marker where I'm zooming in it would be from here to this one here now I got to change my my image here and then we're going to zoom in at that particular location so I need to go by object settings and in this case here we're going to zoom in let's zoom in to this location over here I'm going to center it and then we're going to change the scale I'm going to zoom in on this property so that's the value here and this one all I need to do is right click and say duplicate from previous keyframe and we'll take this one and we'll duplicate two so now we're zoomed in for the length of time here and we're zoomed back out on this one for this duration now we're going to zoom in again to another location here so I want to do zoom in on this one let's zoom in to this property over here that'll be in the center of the screen we're going to scale it up move around now we're going to right click on this one and we'll do I want to repeat the previous previous keyframe duplicate and we're going to duplicate the scale to there so now I have that one so now I have my motion we're going to put our objects on the screen here in a minute but let's see what we've got when we play this we have our map okay we're going to zoom in to location number one and we hold that for five seconds and then we come back out all right then we're going to zoom in on location number two and then we'll continue playing that we're in location two. We'll zoom back out and we're full screen. So we can repeat this as much as we want. So let's stop there and let's go back. And we have our image of a house. Now we're going to use this on a couple of places. Let's take this image and I'm going to take it on the first location. When we're zoomed in, there we have our house. I'm going to increase the duration and that's where the key keyframes and the markers are helpful there's our house now I could have it this size I could I think I'll make it just a little bit smaller so I need to edit it so I click here and let's change the height and width just a tad and let's change the location now I have my house now I want to change something about the house I want to change the animation I'm going to make it pop in so click on this and it'll pop in so that's a nice feature so now I have an animated house I also want to tell people about the price of the house so we're going to add a title so I'm going to go to my title room I'll take the generic plain text my title drag it down and put it in that same area and I want to do some editing on it so I'm going to double click on it and let's make the title uh, a different color let's change the color to black and make it bold too and I also want to let's make this the price so I'm going to put a background behind it let's do this one that should automatically give it a background and so we're going to call this 425 K thousand dollars and I want it centered I also want to add the location so I could add a separate title but in this case I'm going to go to advanced on my title and what I want to do then is add a second title so I just click on the T here at the top and it'll give me another one I'll call this uh, 456 Oak Street now I can take the second one and drag it down and separate it from the first one let's give that one a backdrop I can use the default one or change it let me change it to something brighter here I'll click on OK and I'm going to change the font to be slightly different 
to distinguish it from the other one. Let's take something quite different here. This one here, and I'm going to change the size down a little bit, maybe 14. So I have, a, I have the title and I have the location. And we can tweak these all we want in terms of how they work with each other. So that is my price and that is my location. I'll click on OK. Now the other thing I want to do is make sure that they don't override each other. So we have our look at our house here and I might want to take the title and drag it drag these down a little bit. They move together because they're on the same title track, which is what I want. So the house pops in. We have the price. We have the location. I want to add one more feature. I want to add an arrow showing whether the price has gone up or down. So to do that, I need to be in my overlays room and I want to go into the stickers. Now, I often don't think of these as stickers, but I'm going to go into the subcategory called tutorial creation down here and then I have arrows. There are other stickers you can use. Let's take the red one. Okay, that's the one I want. And I'll put that on another track. We'll have it come in and stay. So I want to increase the duration of the arrow. Now the arrow's going the wrong way, so I'm going to turn it 90 degrees. I can change the height and width if I want to. Let's take it like this. We're not going to edit that in this particular tutorial. But now that I've got that done, I want to change a feature. I'm going to click on Edit. And let's change the way in which it, the arrow comes in. I'm going to use, I have a sliding 05, I believe, here. Try that one. So there it goes. Okay, that's good. That's what I want. So I have all these features. Let's give myself a little more room down here. I have these three features together. I'm going to take them and I'm going to do Control C to copy. And I'm going to move in my uh, marker over to the next area. I'll move here where I have the second picture come in. It says second property. Do Control V to paste. And now the only thing I have to change in this one is go back into the titles and we're going to change the, the address. Okay, I've changed that. Let's change the amount and we'll leave we'll leave the arrow as though it, it also increased in price. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's play it and see what we have. Okay, we're going to see it. zoom in on property number one. The house will pop up, the arrow will pop up, we have the address. And then it will pop back out to full screen. And then it zooms in. And we have the house and the arrow and the address. And you can obviously modify any of this any way you want to customize and add as many different locations and pop-ups. Historically, geographically, whatever you'd like to do. That's how you can achieve this kind of result in CyberLink PowerDirector.